Greetings guys, girls, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Recently, it has been brought to my attention that the right-wing dating app, The Right Stuff, has a TikTok account, and it is a gold mine. So what I wanted to do today was to take a bit of a dive. I wanted to have a look at some of them with you. I've gone through this account. I've already seen all of these. I accidentally saved 30 of these TikToks when I absolutely do not have the time to talk about all of them. So if you want a part two of this to look at even more of this fantastically fun account, then please drop a like. And if there's enough interest, maybe I will. But before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, David. I really appreciate all of your support over all of this time. Um, I hope that you enjoy this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash or click the link in the description. Um, I've just started doing a bit more stuff over there. So like uh, the other day I did a live stream of a video that will be uploaded on my second channel soon. So if you're interested in that, then you can go over and check that out and I appreciate it. All right, anyway, enough self promo. Let's get into the fun. The Right Stuff is a dating app that is exclusively for right-wing conservatives and it was created by this guy I've forgotten his name. They say it all the time. I feel like it's Michael. He feels like a Michael. John, his name is John. That, Michael, John, same thing. Basically this man, John, created the app, I believe. I'm pretty sure he made the app. And he has a TikTok account that he pretends is run by a bunch of employees who are filming him and making videos about him. Really to sum up his character, I will show you this TikTok here. There's something about airports. I think love's in the air. I'm gonna try to find someone on my flight. Guys, this actually worked. I'm going on a date. So basically he is at the airport and he's like, love is in the air at this airport. I'm gonna see if I can pick up a girl. And he makes a sign that says, I'm single, I'm sitting in this seat. Come chat with me. Not only is this a really weird thing to do, like I would hate this man if I saw him in public. You could be confident, but there is a there is a line and I think he crosses it. I wouldn't want anything to do with him. I'd wanna sit as far away from him on the plane as I possibly could. Um, but then ending it by saying that it works and he got a girl's number. There are multiple things wrong with this. One, I hope that you didn't because you showed her full number. Don't show people's phone numbers. Uh, on TikTok, don't do that. That's a terrible thing to do, don't do that. Two, it's in your handwriting. <laughs> At least get your assistant to write it for you, the person filming, or if you wrote the sign, you should write the phone number. Like that, that's the same handwriting. Three, I you that d just didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't work, it didn't happen. No one gave you their number. That didn't happen. Don't, don't lie. But the fourth and final most important point is that this is terrible advertising. You are not smart. Why? <laughs> you created a dating app and this TikTok account is meant to exist to advertise the dating app. And so you post a TikTok of yourself failing to get a date in a, in a setting that is not your dating app. Why would you do that, bro? Like, even if you are single, you shouldn't be advertising that because it just makes it look like your app doesn't work. And he does this a lot. Like in this video, this is my boss, John, because obviously his employee is making it. He's totally not making this himself. He's extremely Republican and works with Trump. He's single and looking for love. I'm doing an experiment. I'm gonna set him up on a date with a liberal to see if opposites do attract. He started his own business, loves to travel. He'll take you somewhere yummy. <laughs> he cleans up nice. Taking all liberal applications. Let's see how this goes. Follow along. And obviously it doesn't go anywhere and they're just doing it for likes because you know, there's never a follow up. They just keep making this exact video over and over. Except it didn't used to say, this is my boss, John. It used, John? What? It is John. It is John. He has a, he has a boring, like my brain is like, the, all these names sound the same and I feel like I'm wrong. I'm right. This is John. He looks more like a Michael, but it, it is John. Okay. It used to say, 
my name is John. I am John. I am single. But now he's like my boss, John, because I guess it makes him look like he's in a higher state of authority. And that's going to be more effective, even though the ones that said I am John were like only a couple months ago. And I don't think this has grown very much because he's doing really bad advertising by posting on social media that he is single. And instead of using the app that he created to find love, he is using TikTok and still failing. <laughs> Dude, you can't be advertising your dating app with, I've been single for 10 years. So why did you create a dating app? How did you do that? Why would anyone use it? Why would anyone trust you to create a good dating app if you can't get a date and haven't been able to for 10 years? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being single. There's nothing wrong with like struggling to find a partner or whatever. Like that's, that's valid and I'm sorry, but also don't use the dating app. <laughs> platform to be advertising that you haven't had a date or been in a relationship for 10 years. That's a just terrible business. Truly terrible business. Have you stopped and wondered why you're single? Have you stopped and wondered why your own dating app doesn't work for you? So funny. <laughs> Other than being really terrible at promoting his product, which he never does, by the way, he just makes TikToks. He doesn't even say that this is for a dating app. He never mentions what the TikTok account is. He never mentions, he never mentions it, which is wild to me. You started a business, you're, you've made your entire personality about being a conservative and being single, and you've never once even mentioned what you do and what this is. Like, that's just weird to me. But anyway, the main thing he does is make fun of liberals and leftists, which for some reason conservatives think are the exact same thing. But he does a terrible job of it. He's just really bad at it. <laughs> like an example is this, which is arguably freaking hilarious, all right? Like watch this. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, I think when referencing David the shepherd, we're calling the animals sheep. I think it would be a little more inclusive if we called them the. Like that's so funny. <laughs> like that would be so funny if a genderqueer person made that joke. Like if a queer person made that joke, that would be hilarious. You know, we make those sorts of jokes all the time because we like to make fun of ourselves because it's funny, you know? Like this man has such energy as do so many conservatives of like, they read jokes that we make on Twitter and think that we're being dead serious. And they're like, I can't believe they would say this. I can't believe they say that we can't say sheep, but we should say they. Like no one is saying that and memeing it. If you've ever seen anyone say that, it's a joke. But these people dead ass think that we're serious about it because they've never laughed at themselves a day in their life. They don't understand humor that is at the expense of themselves because they're so busy trying to pull down everyone else that when we make fun of ourselves and make a joke, they're like, Oh, you're obviously being serious. No, we just know how to have fun. And you don't, you take life too seriously, bro. <laughs> like that's, that's so funny. That's so funny, but not coming from you. And he does this a lot. So like another example, my favorite example is this one. He is at the dentist and it's like, the dentist says, wow, your teeth are so white and straight. And then like the liberal gets offended and stands up and marches out. like. I make those jokes all the time. So much of my humor is just this shit. Someone's like, it's like, oh, did I cut my fringe straight? And they're like, no, but that's fine because neither are you. Like, that's fucking hilarious. Or someone's like, oh, this looks really straight today. I'm like, ow, that's so offensive. Like, I'm joking. <laughs> like, I'm joking. But if someone said to me, your teeth look really white and straight, I would, I would totally joke about it. But again, it's, it's a joke. Conservatives have only two jokes and they are making fun of other people. And so they don't understand anything outside of that. Like we have multiple jokes. We have a whole array of jokes and they are mostly laughing at ourselves and they can't comprehend that. So they take everything we say very, very seriously. And it's exhausting. Like, dude, if we are acting offended by you saying that our teeth are straight, it, it's, a, it's a joke. <laughs> Again, like this would be, this would be so funny. If it was a queer person making these exact same TikToks, it would be funny. That's the funniest part about this is that like all of this coming from a leftist or a queer person, like most of his account would be very enjoyable and funny um, because it's people making fun of themselves. 
But because of his intention and the fact that he's like being dead serious about it, it just makes it really cringe. <laughs> like, just, oh my God, you know? Like if he was doing it ironically, it would be funny, but he's not. So it's sad. Like here we have a liberal man on a lunch date and he gets given a burger and the woman he's supposedly on a date with gets given a salad and he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they thought I got the burger. Obviously you get the burger. Because liberal men don't eat burgers. They're weak and they only eat salad. What does that even mean? I don't understand this narrative at all that like conservative men can't eat vegetables. Like men don't like vegetables. Men don't eat salad. Men do nothing but eat red meat and fight. Like what? <laughs> If you want to live your life doing nothing and eating nothing but red meat, have fun dying at a young age of a heart attack. Like, bro, people like different foods. I personally, as a vegan woman, will always order a burger before I order a salad. I don't like salad. I'm not a salad fan. I've never ordered a salad at a restaurant and I never will. I don't intend on ever ordering a salad. I don't like salad. I don't, I don't like it, I don't get it. And I do love burgers and I will order a burger. And some men like salads and some men like vegetables. Some men are vegan and it, it doesn't impact their masculinity at all. I don't understand how vegetables threaten your masculinity, but like that'll kill you. So keep being afraid of vegetables, I guess, but fucking why? Get over it, bro. How is your masculinity so fragile? On this subject, he has this TikTok that's way too long, by the way, that is liberal has no energy from his vegan diet and it's him at the gym just doing really badly, like barely being able to lift weights and having poor form and like passing out. Uh, I've got to put a new battery in my camera. I just do not understand how it is 2023 and people are still obsessed with hating vegans for like no goddamn fucking reason. Like, I'm sorry I care about animals and have compassion towards animals. And I'm sorry I care about the planet. That's my bad. I apologize so much for making these terrible life choices that offend you so greatly for whatever goddamn reason. <laughs> but like, why, why are so many men and now I guess like just conservatives in general so like anti-vegan and so especially with men, like it's emasculine to not consume red meat and like you have to exist off of red meat or you're, you're fragile, you're a woman. I don't understand it at all. Like it's been proven multiple times that if you have a vegan diet, it is much healthier. Obviously this differs depending on what you eat. If your vegan diet consists of like chips and burgers and Oreos, probably not. <laughs> but on average, a vegan diet is healthier. It's like zero cholesterol and you are very capable of getting all of the nutrients that you need, a majority of people anyway. And something that people love to overlook, these conservatives love to overlook, is that a lot of people choose to go vegan to bulk up. Like Chris Hemsworth went vegan to prepare to play the role of Thor. And I know several vegan bodybuilders. I don't know them personally, but like back when I was in like vegan Facebook groups and stuff years ago, there were a bunch of vegan bodybuilders. I used to go to the gym a lot. So I follow a lot of vegan uh, gym girls on Instagram and like one of them I still see all the time on my feed and she posts like what I eat in a day and it's like 130 grams of protein. Like you can be very, very fit and very, very strong and you can bulk up and be vegan. And that's, that's what's so wild to me is that these people talk about like being unhealthy and being you know, obese and having heart attacks at a young age and all of that. And most of that comes down to eating a lot of red meat and processed meats. Like eating red meat with every meal, you are, you are setting yourself up for high cholesterol and a heart attack. So that's on you. If you want to do that, you can do that. Eat a salad every now and then. <laughs> Pick up some vegetables. Don't eat red meat with every meal. It doesn't make you more of a man. If you're so insecure about your masculinity that you have to kill an animal at every meal, you aren't as masculine as you think you are because 
truly masculine people who are comfortable within their masculinity don't give a fuck <laughs> about their decisions that they make and how other people are going to perceive them. They do the things that make them happy and it has nothing to do with their gender or anything like that because it's all made up and you should just live your life to be happy and healthy. So, yeah, I, it's such a weird take, but have fun with your heart attack. Yeah, sign here. Get that for you. What is it right here? Uh, like I said, standard contract bullshit. It's... Democrats be like, legalize heroin. Come on, it's just a signature. Just sign here. And listen, I, I, I don't disagree. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if you should legalize it in the sense of the same way that you legalize cannabis in which you can go into a shop and buy heroin. I don't think we should be doing that. It's very addictive. It's very dangerous. But it should be decriminalized. We shouldn't be punishing addicts. We should be helping addicts. We should be making it so that people who become addicts are able to get help without being afraid of having to face legal repercussions. We should be able to keep addicts safe and give them a way to get better without feeling a ton of shame and without having to spend all of their money. Like they should be able to get help, you know? And we should have better education around drugs that isn't just all fear tactics. We just need better drug education and control that doesn't come down to punishing people who are addicted. People who distribute drugs are in the wrong. Absolutely. And I think that we need to do something about that. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of questions and this is a big, big conversation and a big topic about like uh, where there is like lack of jobs, lack of opportunity, um, drugs being forced and put out onto the street in order to keep the socioeconomic standing and the uh, segregation between people and classes. There is a whole massive conversation but it basically comes down to drug use should not be criminalized and addicts should be able to get help and they should be able to get it early on before they become super addicted and before it ruins their lives, you know? I think that that's important is that we should make rehab available and we should help people before they become addicted. Like, see, saying stuff that's like, he's trying to make fun of liberals and it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it's just not working for him. Okay, next up. Women coming home from a long day of work because they married a liberal man that believes everything should be 50-50 and he's like dragging himself across the ground. And I feel like this one's so funny because you both work and contribute money to the household and then you both look after the kids, you both do chores, you both go grocery shopping, you split everything 50-50. So if the woman is this exhausted after working a job to split things 50-50, if she wasn't doing that and a man had to contribute 100%, would he not be twice as exhausted as this? Like, why should it be the man's burden to carry? Why should he have to have the entire weight of that responsibility on his shoulders? Splitting a 50-50 is a helpful way to share the burden and to like communicate that and have empathy and understanding, you know? And like, that doesn't work for everyone. Some relationships work with one person working and one person doing all the chores and the grocery shopping and paying the bills, etc. And that's fine if that works for your dynamic. That works for your dynamic, as long as you are each other's support person, you know? But like, this is so silly because if I'm working 50% and my husband is working 50%, surely, surely if I look like that, if my husband had to work 100%, he would be more exhausted and I don't want that, you know? Like, show the other perspective here. Is the man happy? Is he doing better? Like, I don't think it's worth sacrificing one person's mental health to save the other. I feel like we should be on an equal standing and do what's gonna work for both of us. Liberals flooding the bike stores after the temperature has risen 0.01 .01 degrees. And he's like, it's excited and ecstatic to be buying a bicycle. I don't understand what Americans have against like walking and bikes and public transport. It's so funny. Like, what are you doing? Why are you making fun of bikes? What's the problem with fucking bikes? It's ridiculous. It's so strange. I just got back from LA again. And like the, the amount of Ubers you have to take is ridiculous. You can't go anywhere. And like, what's wrong with using a bike? I don't, I don't get that at all. 
Even if it weren't for climate change, using a bike is good. I don't understand these people. They're like, you need to do exercise. You need to be healthy. But why would you walk? Why would you get a bike? What do you want? What do you want? Cars are bad because they pollute and also because you have to sit in traffic and also they're dangerous. There's a lot of cons to cars. There's cons to everything, obviously, but like you shouldn't have to have a car to get around. Just let people do things. Let people have bikes. Go away. Shut up. I'm going to finish on probably my favorite one um, where he's doing a fake Vogue interview. I find this so funny because I don't see the problem with most of these. And again, if this was created by like a liberal or a leftist, it would be kind of funny. And I don't understand the problem with most of these. Like I genuinely am so baffled by the points he was trying to make. The thing is, is that he's not being over the top, you know, like a lot of people are over the top and create these extreme characters. Whereas he's just like creating a normal everyday person. And I like don't understand the problem he has. Like he's making fun of people, but like for what? Where's where's the punchline? I don't understand how you can say like, if I had a superpower, it would be invisibility so I could steal from banks and give to the needy and have that as like a lull moment. I've never, I've never even thought of that as a superpower, but that's, that's genius. <laughs> like, yeah. How are you, how, how is this a bad, I don't understand how you're portraying this as like a bad idea and a bad thing. The fact that you're like, all of this is bad and stupid. Look how freaking lame and stupid liberals are. They're so like, now you just look like a bad person. You did before, but like, I don't understand how you're making fun of all of these things. (laughs) It doesn't make sense to me. I just want you to explain every single one of these. I want you to look me in the eyes and seriously tell me why you think every single one of the things you said is bad. Why you think they're wrong and why you think it's worth laughing at and making a joke about. I just wanna hear you say it because like, you're just, you're saying things that have happened, um, but I don't understand why you think they're wrong. And I really want you to tell me, I really wanna hear you tell me why you think they're wrong because I can't come up with an explanation other than like, you should use your energy on other things. You know who should use their energy on other things? Tell me, explain. I'd love to know. Thank you. Yeah, I have to go attend a therapy appointment now. So I am going to have to leave it here. (laughs) I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see me do another one of these and looking at more of his TikToks, please leave a like because I have a lot saved to my phone and he uploads every day. So there will be even more in the future. So let me know, comment your interest, drop a like, etc. I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Igazel, Kai, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Queer Corey, Raven, Danielle, Elias, Evie, Nix of the Eternal Night, JD Creeper, Rin, and Julie. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things like uh, outtakes, 
bonus mini podcasts, vlogs, live streams, and more. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah.